Yes, what's good ladies and gents, welcome to the MKO Pugilism Boxing channel where we talk all things boxing. Do remember to like and subscribe, hit that bell notification, put it on all so you get notified of all the latest content as and when we drop it on the channel. So let's get into the content of today's video. So today I'm going to be talking to you about the press conference that just took place uh, last night. This was for the big card in Saudi Arabia, the star-studded card with um quite a few of the uh top heavyweights cruiserweights etc so <clears throat> obviously um the main and co-main events on this card is going to be anthony joshua versus otto wallin um you're also going to have uh joseph parker versus deontay the bronze bomber wilder um both of those they're going to be i'm not i think joshua was saying he is the co-main event um whether or not that's the case i'm not too sure but um yeah those are two big fights i think um with joshua and otto wallin i think otto wallin will cause joshua uh issues i think it will cause him problems um he's going to be a difficult style for aj to combat with because he's a southpaw He's tall. He's, he's about the same sort of height as Anthony Joshua, um, and in the in the press conference, you could see them roughly same sort of height. Wallin's a bit of a mover, um, not a big puncher, but he's he's a guy that will cause you problems. Good conventional southpaw boxer, caused Tyson Fury lots of issues, and I think it's going to be one of those fights where. AJ is going to have to not look to outbox this guy. He's going to have to um, look to get in there, you know, mid to, to sort of close range and try and dominate from within the pocket. He's going to have to try and break Otto Walling down, go to the body, things of that nature, and, and be um, more reminiscent of how he used to uh, box before. That's my sort of opinion. And for Wallin, he's got to just try and outbox Anthony Joshua over the distance. Um, you know, hard to probably get a decision over Joshua, but hey ho. You've got Wilder versus um, Joseph Parker. And that is a fight whereby I find it very difficult to um, pick against uh, Deontay Wilder. Um, but at the same time, I think what uh, Parker's got going for him is that Deontay Wilder has been out of the ring for a long time now. I mean, you're talking, uh, it's over a year. I mean, probably the best part of, I guess, close to sort of 18 months, you know, out of the ring. So Wilder's been inactive. But at the same time, Wilder's one of those guys where he's very confident in himself. Um, as I think G-Man said, G-Man boxing that, uh, look, Wilder is, is, is confident, not the deep, not like a deep thinker. So he still thinks that Fury cheated and he still thinks he done nothing wrong in his fight. So he'll be fully confident in that right hand. And I, I pick him to sort of more than likely take Joseph Parker out in his fight, get a stoppage. But at the same time, I think Joseph Parker, ability-wise, has got the abilities, the, you know, the skills, the technique to uh, make it very difficult for Deontay Wilder and to possibly cause the upset. You know, if he comes in there with belief, with a good game plan, if he uses his speed and movement, um, he, he will cause Deontay Wilder problems as long as he's, as he's confident and he believes in himself and he, he boxes with confidence, bit of aggression, uses that, those attributes that he's got, then I think he's, he could, he's got the potential to cause the upset, but I just don't think, you know, I think he's, he's lacked killer instinct in a lot of his fights and stuff. So, um, yeah, we, we'll have to see. But for me, you've got to favour Deontay Wilder, really and truly. I think Wilder's just got that one punch power and he will wait. He will be patient. And once he lands it, we'll have to see. Parker's proven to be a tough guy, but... Can he take that punch? Um, but yeah, moving on. So you've got Mahmoudov um, on the card also. You know, he's um, against, uh, I think, no, what am I talking about? I was going to say to be confirmed, but it's actually Ajit uh, Kabayel. Kabayel is a useful boxer. Um, the most notable win on his resume is Derek Chisora. Um, 
But that's, again, that's going back six years. And since that win, he hasn't had a significant win since. And again, he's one of these guys. He dances, he moves, he boxes. And so he's, again, he's kind of, he's got the potential to cause Makhmadov um, problems. But I just get the feeling that Makhmadov is just going to sort of steamroll him and just sort of walk through his punches, walk him down and stop him. That's my feeling going into it. I think Makhmadov's just going to, you know, sort of eat him for breakfast. I mean, he's got potential, uh, Caballero, but again, there's not been any significant victories. I mean, to be fair, I mean, even Makhmadov, he's, he's had problems with Carlos Takam. Didn't look so invincible and so destructive against Carlos Takam. Had to go the distance for that win. So, yeah, he, he's, he's got flaws in his game. But in this fight, I, I can't see anything past Makhmadov um, dealing with him quite handily. Um, yeah, moving on down the card, you've got Zoro versus um, Jai Opataya. For me, this this is one of those where, okay, you know, Zoro's kind of, you know, there's levels to this and he's just several levels below Jaya Pattaya. Jaya Pattaya, um, you know, I suppose he's yet to prove it 100%, but for most people, um, he's he's pretty much the, the top cruiserweight in the game. He's still got more people to fight and still got to, you know, become undisputed, but... Based on what we're seeing of him, he looks to be the top cruiserweight. And this um, Zorro guy, I, I don't expect him to go the distance. He didn't sound very confident in the press conference. Um, you know, he said he doesn't know what holes there are in Jaipataya's game, but that doesn't mean that there aren't holes. So yeah, there was there was kind of a a little tell there where you might you could say maybe a lack of confidence. From this guy Zoro, the Queensbury um, fighter, and for me, I expect um, Opatai to win and win in style, um, stop him much like he did um, Jordan Thompson. I don't know whether this guy is, you know, to be fair, I'm a little bit ignorant in his career, so where I don't know whether he's any better than a Jordan Thompson. We we, we shall see. Um, moving on, you've got um, Dimitri Bivol versus um, Lyndon King Arthur. That's another fight on the card. And again, I think this is one where, for my money, I think Lyndon Arthur, good fighter, good boxer, but um, I think he he gets stopped against Dimitri Bivol. I think um, he's a good boxer. He's good. He's, he's shown class. But again, it's always been at a lower level. He's not um, been anywhere near the type of level um, where Dimitri Bivol is. Um, he's been nowhere near it and, you know, he's fallen short against guys like Anthony Yard. And I do think Anthony Yard is a very good fighter. But I would say this, that if you're falling short against um, an Anthony Yard, you're going to get destroyed by a guy like Dimitri Bivol. Because just, just in terms of the levels... Because that, for me, Bivol's the you know elite of the elite. The only question mark is whether or not he can beat um, Artur Baturbiev. So I think if you fall short against guys like Yard. Um, he, don't get me wrong; he's got attributes. He's got the height and everybody. And I suppose they're the same sort of height. But he's got good attributes, good tidy boxer. But I don't think he carries the sort of punching power that would cause. Um, Bivol issues and again he's got a good ring IQ but I would argue Bivol's got the better ring IQ so heavily favour Dimitri Bivol in that fight to probably win by a stoppage um, then you've got guys like um, who we got we got um, Big Farmer Miller Jarrell Big Farmer aka Big Baby Miller against Dynamite Daniel Dubois and that was um, that's a fight where I think it's genuinely a 50-50 fight because I think um, Daniel Dubois has got the capabilities, full capability. He's got the punch power. He's got the the, the ability that, you know, he's a bit robotic and stuff, but he's got the everything you need to be a guy like Jarrell Big Baby Miller. Um, Jarrell Miller is going to, you know, plod forward and try to, 
sort of just eat Daniel Dubois shots and just just walk him down, tire him out, and then sort of try and take him out. That's what Big Baby Miller is going to try and do. He's just going to try and walk Daniel Dubois down. There's not going to be any um, much sophistication in his game plan. I mean, he'll probably throw quite a lot of shots. He's not the biggest of punches, but... Yeah, there's there's two ways of looking at it. I think in one sense you could say, well, Dubois too young, too fresh. He finds the shots to um, her and not Big Baby Miller out. But then there's another way of looking at it where you could say, well, Big Baby Miller um, walks Daniel Dubois down, makes him panic, makes him fight at a high tempo, um, wears him out, takes his best shot and keeps coming and then takes him out late in the fight and then may, or, or makes him quit, as he was saying in the press conference. So, yeah, for me, Dubois versus um, Big Baby Miller, 50-50 fight. Um, there's a lot of respectable people saying that, well, um, Big Baby actually beats Daniel Dubois so who knows I mean I think that could happen but I think um Daniel Dubois um has the, has the um confidence now in himself and he has the skill to beat Jarrell Big Baby Miller I I kind of call it a you know maybe 55 45 if I'm doing percentages in Daniel Dubois favor I think Daniel Dubois can do this he can take him out um, I think it's just a matter of a mental thing in his head. Does he believe that? And as I think as long as Daniel Dubois believes it and, and you know, boxes to a good game plan, I mean, Jarrell Miller is easy to hit. And if you target the right areas, you break up him, break him up to the body and, you know, then bring your shots upstairs, you know, use clever movement on him and just break him up and, and take him out. I think Daniel Dubois can do this. Um, that, that's my opinion on it. But I only slightly edge it towards Daniel Dubois because it all could go wrong if Jarrell Miller sort of takes his best punch and then sort of comes again and just walks through it. And then, yeah, Dubois might just run out of ideas. So that that's a possibility. But I'd like to hope and, you know, the, the fact Miller's even fighting on this card in itself is very controversial because obviously he's, he's failed... Uh, multiple drugs tests. I think it's free now and for every single steroid under the sun. So, yeah, th I mean, that's that's the sort of majority of the card. I mean, you've got the other fight, which I think is a bit crazy. Um, you've got um, Hergovic versus that Mark Demori, who was, um, well, from my earliest recollection, the first one of the first YouTube boxers, a guy that learned how to box on YouTube. Um, his claim to fame is losing to David Hay. Um, and ironically, I was at that fight. I was at that fight um, in the O2 Arena back in the days. Uh, Brother-in-law, you know, shout out to him. He took me there um, to watch it. And yeah, Mark Demori. Mark Demori, for me, it's just no good. One star rating on um, on a box wreck. And he gets flattened within a round or two. By Philip Hergovic. If Philip Hergovic is what we think he is, Philip Hergovic flattens this guy. Easy work, you know, two rounds max. Um, because this this Demori, he's not for anybody. He's got no notable wins on his resume. He's you know he's fought David Hayes and David Hayes come back and that's it. That's his claim to fame. But he genuinely is not good and um, <laughs> you know Box Rec certainly don't think so. And I think if, you know no one really thinks so but good for him he gets his little opportunity but it is a very poor um opponent for Filip Hergovic given his status um in 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 the ratings you know next in in line for a title so you got that um you know and then you've got also Frank Sanchez versus Junior Farr which is um another fight on the card um, that's a fight where I think you've got to back um, Frank Sanchez. Frankie Sanchez, just tidy, skillful uh, Cuban boxer. Um, you know, he should have too much for Junior Far. Junior Far um, got flattened by, um, <laughs> by Lucas Brown. Again, you know, a guy that has won a world title once in his career, but also well known for failing the drugs tests and stuff like that. Um, so Junior Far, no real 
notable names or wins on his record. I mean, lost to Joseph Parker. Um, so th for me, th there's nothing he does special. Um, and I'm expecting Frankie Sanchez to beat him most likely on points. Um, if not, it could be um, a knockout. So yeah, that's. I think that's pretty much the whole of this card. Let me know what you think about this big Saudi card, the Day of Reckoning in Saudi Arabia, featuring, you know, it's very, very stacked. That's why it's such a long video. But anyway, let me know your thoughts on this card in the comment section below. And until next time, it's MKL Pugilism over and out.